Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, over here on the end, <laughs> Krista Porter uh, from the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar show where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live um, every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on, on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is then posted to our uh, website in our archives. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives of the show. Both the live show and the recordings, recorded archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might have an interest in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that's for all types of libraries. You will find things on our show for uh, K-12, academics, public corrections, museums, anything that has a library or something library-ish <laughs> related, um, there could be something on our show um, about that. Um, we have a mixture of things on the show, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of products and services, um, anything we think that may be interesting to anyone in the library world. We do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations on topics that are things that we are doing here at the Library Commission. Um, and we also sometimes bring in guest speakers to talk about things they are doing. And today we have a mixture of that to sit down today. Um, today we are talking about the 2021 Book One Nebraska title, um, All the Gallant Men. And um, I think I'll just, you know, hand over to you, Tessa, and we can introduce as we go who's doing sure. that, I guess. Um, Tessa Perry is our communications coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission, works with Nebraska Center for the Book and Humane Nebraska and, um, and all of these events that we do related to this. So yeah. I think I'll just hand over to you and you can take it away and can talk about the book. So this is our annual One Book, One Nebraska Encompass Live. We do this every year just to talk about the program itself, um, what the Center for the Book is doing to promote it, and then how the Library Commission and Humanities Nebraska all kind of have a hand in this program. So we're going to start it off by just talking about the Center for the Book itself, and I'm going to hand that over to Rod Wagner, our director. Uh, yes, good morning. Um, the uh, Nebraska Center for the Book is a is an affiliate of the Center for the Book at the Library of Congress. Uh, every state has a uh, state center. Ours was uh, among the early uh, states organized uh, with a Center for the Book, and we um, have a number of programs, including the One Book One Nebraska program. We also have the Letters About Literature program that we participate in. Uh, we have a Book Awards uh, program in which we uh, annually uh, present awards for outstanding books uh, written with a Nebraska connection. Uh, but today our purpose is to uh, talk about uh, this year's selection for One Book, One Nebraska. Um, and who is next? Uh, Becky. <laughs> Becky Faber. Um, she is on the Nebraska Center for the Book board as well as the selection committee for our One Book, One Nebraska. And can you tell us a little bit about the One Book program and then how we chose this year's book? The One Book, One Nebraska is a program that unites the state of Nebraska in reading one book throughout a calendar year. And this program has been intact for about 15 years. Um, the process is very straightforward. The books that are nominated come from the public. So before the selection committee even begins to work on choosing a book, we look at uh, the books that have been nominated, and at the end, uh, Tessa will show the form for being able to nominate a book. But every book that is nominated is considered, and every book that is nominated comes from the public. And this is not the same in all states, but in Nebraska, the process has always been 
that the nominations are made by public readers. Uh, the books need to be written by Nebraska authors, um, whether that author has been born in Nebraska, <clears throat> excuse me, or lived his or her entire life there, that's not um, an integral part of it. The author does need to have lived in Nebraska at some point, or the book needs to have a Nebraska setting or a Nebraska theme. And once uh, books meet at least one or two of those criteria, um, then they, and, and they also must be widely available to readers, um, then the committee begins the selection process. And every book that is nominated that meets criteria is read by at least two readers. And as um, the readers finish the book, they give feedback um, on, on their evaluation of the book and how they feel that readers across Nebraska would respond to the book. And the process then continues to narrow until we have a short list of four or five books. At that point, we do publicize what the short list is so that readers across Nebraska can see how we've been uh, advancing in this process. And then that short list goes to the entire board of the Center for the Book. And um, the board is given background and information about each book. And then uh, the board members vote and one book is selected. So here we have um, a slide with all the past One Book, One Nebraska selections. If someone nominates a book um, last year that didn't get chosen, do they have to nominate again for 2021? Yes. Yeah. So new nominations every single year. Um, we do have on the One Book, One Nebraska webpage, we have a uh, specific page for each book, but we do have the list of this these books on the Center for the Book webpage as well. So you can go back and take a peek at them. They're also all still available as book club kits from the commission and the regional library system. So, so this year's selection is All the Gallant Men. Can you tell us a little bit about why we chose this book and how it came to be our One Book, One Nebraska selection? Well, it uh, met criteria initially because, of course, the author was born in Nebraska, and certainly this book, uh, published in 2016, is quite uh, widely available. And Mr. Stratton uh, talks uh, very clearly about his upbringing in the state of Nebraska. Um, this is a very appealing book. As the committee read it, and we looked at feedback from the readers. Um, the readers talked about it as being personal, yet incredibly important historically. They found it to be uh, very well written and compelling to read. I've talked with readers who um, have commented that it was a very difficult book to put down. They were mm -hmm. so caught up in it. And I actually talked with one woman who said that she would be glad when her husband finished reading it so he would talk with her again because <laughs> he was so engrossed in the book that he uh, was just kind of in his own world, I guess. <laughs> um, I've read the book cover to cover at least twice and have gone back and looked at other parts of it. And um, each time I read it, I'm picking up on something that I didn't notice the first time through, but I'm also uh, sharing that feeling that others have talked about, which is that this is such a unique account mm -hmm. of Pearl Harbor. Um, it is the first memoir by a survivor of the USS Arizona. And regardless of how many 
films one has seen about World War II or the way it was taught in a history class, there is information in this book that simply is not available anywhere else. And I think that it also, um, it's written by a very humble man. Mr. Stratton does not elevate himself as a hero in any way. He's very humble, but it is um, very touching to see what he endured um, when the USS Arizona was attacked by the Japanese planes on December 7th, 1941. And also his resilience from the incredible injuries that he suffered and then his desire to return to military service um, in 1944 and fight in some of the final battles in the Pacific uh, of World War II. In everyone on the committee who read it was just taken by the immense uh, commitment and resilience that Mr. Stratton had. I, I, every reader I've spoken to, whether it was in the process or afterwards, has really been taken by this book. Mm -hmm. I see you've got a copy with you. Were there any parts you had picked out to read? or? Um, I had marked some things in the book that um, I thought were important. And the book is has a copyright of 2016. And so one might wonder why he waited until 2016 to tell this story. Um, and he was talking about that he wanted to write this story for the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And he said at 94, which he was at that time, I don't take the years ahead for granted. I share what I remember when I can, but a day will come when I can no longer speak. What then, I've asked myself, what will become of the memories that I as a survivor have experienced or the lessons that we as a nation have learned. That's why I wrote this book. And of course, mm -hmm. such a blessing for us that he did write it. And um, his co-writer, Ken Geyer, um, helped to put this book together because as I'm sure everyone has heard, Mr. Stratton passed away last weekend. And um, this book is certainly a testament to the stories that are, are very important to American history. So we do have a couple ways that you guys can get involved in One Book, One Nebraska, aside from reading the book, which is obviously one of the most important ways <laughs> you can be involved. Um, we have a web page just for this year's One Book, and it has several different pages on it where you can learn about the book, and the author. On the author page, I believe we have a video recording of Mr. Stratton talking about the novel, or not the novel, the memoir. Um, we have a Get Involved page where you can find information about um, getting a book club kit, finding the book um, in just in general, um, different versions of it. We have a talking book in Braille version that we can offer to readers as well through that service. We also have speakers listed on the Get Involved page from Communities Nebraska that uh, coincide with this year's theme. So, oh, we also have a Facebook page that you can uh, like and follow and keep up to date. We post different um, events that are happening and just any information that we have about the book that we would want to share with you. So speaking of uh, programs, you sent us a few speakers. Right. Tell us about the Humanities Nebraska's part in One Book, One Nebraska. Yeah. Um, Humanities Nebraska annually funds One Book, One Nebraska. We help uh, provide funding for the book kits that get sent out to libraries. We also can provide speakers that have something to do with the book or related to the theme. And this year we have five programs in our Speakers Bureau that relate to World War II. They aren't specifically about um, all the Gallant men, but they can um, have some, provide some context 
to what was going on at that time. Uh, for instance, we have one called The Allied Invasion of Japan um, by Jack Campbell that talks about the last days of World War II and, and that invasion. Uh, we also have um, a program by Doug Rung called Nebraskans Remember World War II. Um, and that provides some um, oral history that he has collected, but also provides um, opportunities for citizens who, who come to that program to, to share their own stories. So those are all available. Uh, you said they're on the One Book, One Nebraska page? Yep, they're listed yeah. on our One Book, One Nebraska page. Yeah, I'm looking at here, they're on the, un, under the Get Involved section where you can get the book, and then if you scroll down, there's about the Facebook page, and then um, the five different sessions that right. you mentioned too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and that's an easy process to apply for a Speakers Bureau presentation. You can go to, um, actually, it's right here on the screen, humanitynebraska.org. Go to our um, Speakers Bureau catalog. We have a very easy online application that you can fill out. The, um, the steps to apply for a Speakers Bureau is to, first of all, contact the speaker, make sure they are available, get them scheduled, and then go onto our website and apply online. And if you have any questions at all, just call our office at 402-474-2131, and we will walk you through the process. Um, there is um, an application fee of $50, um, but we will cover the costs of the speakers. We'll cover their honorarium and their travel. They will travel throughout the state. Yeah, it's a really great program that we've utilized for the One Book, One Nebraska for several yeah. books. And mm -hmm. um, it's just a really good connection for once you've read the book to have a speaker come into your community and just expand on that a little bit for you guys as well as your book club readers, but also anybody in your community who want to attend that kind of session. Mm -hmm. Becky, tell us a little bit about some of the um, other ways um, people can get involved with um, you were going to set up a few speaking about the one book in general. Yes, I'm looking into um, some possibilities for programs uh, here in Lincoln and then also uh, more toward central Nebraska. Uh, so as I'm able to get things tightened up, we will definitely yeah. put those on the website. But I think we have... Um, I think we have a book here that is going to generate um, wonderful response from people who attend these presentations, um, whether they have a connection with someone who served in World War II um, or someone who served perhaps in the military later than that, or even with family folklore, stories that they've heard through their families. And a few years ago, uh, our one book, One Nebraska, was Once Upon a Town about the North Platte Canteen. And people who had never been to North Platte um, still found ways that they could connect with uh, the troop movements through Nebraska or the assignments in World War II. And so I think that one does not have to have a friend or relative who served in the military to be able to respond to this book. And I think uh, with that in mind, that in any community, any of the presentations are going to draw wonderful response from those who attend. Yeah. Another program that we're, I'm going to say partnering with in a sense, is the um, Humanities Nebraska uh, Nebraska Warrior Writers Program. So can you tell us a little bit about that, Erica? Yeah. Um, in fact, I was thinking a lot about the Nebraska Warrior Writers Program when Becky was talking about how um, Donald Strath had took a while to write this book. Because I think I had read some place where he spent 25 years trying to forget what had happened um, at Pearl Harbor, and then um, then he wrote this, this book to remember. And we have a lot of veterans in Nebraska who work very hard to forget um, their combat service. And Nebraska Warrior Writers is not really um, 
a therapy for that. It's just a chance for veterans and active military to get together in a safe writing group where they can explore um, writing in different genres about different things. They don't always write about their military experience, but they can write memoirs or fiction or poetry, nonfiction. We have some science fiction writers. We have some fantasy writers. And it's just a safe spot to get together and write and work with professional writing instructors. We have um, other published authors who come in every week, um, almost every week, to, um, to talk with them and, and lead them into in writing exercises. And um, we have a picture of our Lincoln group up there on the screen. Um, it's just been a really successful program. We have one going on in Lincoln right now that um, is on Saturdays. It started February 8th, and it goes until May 2. Um, and I think we have some of those flyers available with the dates. Um, and you can, if you're a veteran, active military, or family of a veteran, you can attend at any time. So for instance, if you missed February 8th, but you can go February 22, you are always more than welcome to go. We also have a group going on in Omaha right now. Um, they just started, I think, last week on the 15th, and they're going to meet again on the 29th. They, they go until May 16th. So once again, um, if you miss the first week, you can go the second week or the third week. Um, they are free to attend, uh, which is quite, um, quite amazing for writing <laughs> workshops of this caliber. Usually you have to pay $100, $150 to get professional writing instruction and get one-on-one -on -one with um, with published authors, but we mm -hmm. provide this for free thanks to very generous donations. Where else in Nebraska, so we've talked about Lincoln and Omaha, is, are there any other uh, programs throughout the state? For Nebraska Warrior Arts? Yes. Um, we have had a program in Grand Island in the past. We are currently seeking um, some, we're, we're currently seeking a location and facilitators for a central Nebraska program. Okay. Um, we do Nebraska Warrior Writers um, in partnership with the Nebraska Writing Project, and that's where our writing instructors come from, is from the writing project. They have years and years of experience leading these writing workshops. All right. So if someone out there is interested in starting something like this in their community, how would that process work? Um, well, um, contacting me, first mm -hmm. of all, um, by email, and then what happens is I will talk with Robert Brook of the Nebraska Writing Project to see if we have any Nebraska Writing Project instructors out there in the sure. community. Um, and then trying to get that together. I know we have several people out in central Nebraska who miss our Grand Island program and want to get involved again. So Sounds great. And we do have the link to that website up on the slides right now. So you guys can, if you're interested, take a look at that and possibly contact Erica to find out more. Just another shot of the Lincoln and Omaha sessions that are currently happening. So sort of the culmination of our One Book, One Nebraska program every year is our celebration of Nebraska books. We've already got a date for this year, which is October 17th. Um, we always have that at the Nebraska History Museum, downtown Lincoln. And this is just a really great program experience. Um, you guys wanted to talk about the celebration at all and um, your experience with that in the past? I think it's such um, an interesting day because it's more than just the announcement of the one book, One Nebraska. And uh, the Nebraska Book Awards are given on that day. And as a voracious reader, I love uh, seeing the books that are receiving the book awards because my hand is just flying writing down <laughs> titles um, and making little notes in the in the program of things that uh, I would like to read that are award-winning books so for people who are voracious readers it's a wonderful day to um, find some books that are uh, being acknowledged as being uh, very strong 
yeah, books in a variety of categories. So one does not just have to be interested only in a novel or only in poetry or uh, memoir, but there's a, a wide range mm -hmm. as well. And so I, I love that part of it. Um, I also like seeing people being recognized uh, for the Mildred Bennett Award and groups for the Jane Gesty Award because I think it's a way um, that we acknowledge people who have really given strong effort to promote uh, language literacy and literature in the state of Nebraska. And as a full disclaimer, I am not a native Nebraskan, uh, <laughs> but I've lived in Nebraska most of my life. And so I'm, I never had that fourth grade history class that most Nebraskans have had. So I'm always about two steps behind trying to catch up. And um, But I'm very proud of the efforts that people in this state have taken to um, encourage their cultural heritage. And so um, I like that. And of course, I always love when the one book, one Nebraska selection is <laughs> announced. I, I like um, <laughs> you make it so like what's gonna happen? Yeah, <laughs> yes. it's, it's very special. Yeah, yes. sensible. Yes, and then ta-da, <laughs> we have a winner. But I love watching the faces of the people in the audience because, of course, they've been able to see the short list, and um, mm -hmm. so I like watching the response of the people who come because. It obviously is important to them, and that's going to be a part of their reading list for the next year too. People have their favorites that they voted that they you know may have nominated or read because they saw the short list. Yes. And those those who attend tell us how much they enjoy hearing the uh, authors talk about yeah. their experiences in, in yeah. the book. The, the authors have a brief opportunity to to uh, do some reading from their book, uh, make comments about it, and uh, the museum store also has copies of the books available for sale and then signing afterwards during the reception at mm -hmm. uh, Hensley event for the day. Yeah, I always go home with a whole new book list. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Something about hearing authors talk about their own work just really mm -hmm. ignites my yeah. curiosity for it. And yeah. yeah, I've read a lot of books that way that I probably would not pick up otherwise because I'm a pretty solid fiction reader. Mm -hmm. and a lot of nonfiction books that just sound so appealing after hearing the author speak about them are my favorite. Well, and, and to reinforce Rod's point about the fact that those books are available in the museum store mm -hmm. right then. I don't have to make another trip out or um, you know try and find a source for the book. When I hear about a book that I think is just tremendous, mm -hmm. um, I'm wanting to buy it right away and, and the museum as well. <laughs> yeah. And the museum is well stocked. Yeah, that's when yeah. I usually right. buy my copy of the next one book when Nebraska is <laughs> <laughs> celebration. Yeah. Well, and I often will buy copies um, to give a gift. I can't do it before the announcement because I can't give away <laughs> the it away. Away. <laughs> But yes, once the announcement is made, then I can go in and, and buy copies to give. And I have um, I've given several copies of All the Gallant Men just mm -hmm. already in the short time that it's been the designated one book, one Nebraska. And, and the, uh, the store buys copies of the books that are on the short list. So, yeah. so those are available. You know, they're there, and you can buy any of the uh, ones that were uh, under consideration for the final vote. So before we talk about nominating for One Book, One Nebraska, I just want to give you a chance to uh, type in any questions you might mm -hmm. want us to answer. Um, so go ahead and submit those while we talk about this, and then we'll address your questions. I did something I, was, I wanted to mention, yeah. too. On, on the web page, we were talking about events and things mm -hmm. that going on. There is a calendar of events. Um, but we are looking for what you're doing out in your libraries, too, to let us know. Mm -hmm. um, there's a link there to submit your event by email. 
um, or to call us to let us know so they can be on the calendar so it can help promote if you are did get some of Humanities Nebraska or someone local to talk about their experiences. Um, submit it there on the web page so we can add it to our events calendar so everybody knows what's yeah. going on around the state everywhere. We would love to do that. Um, and it's just nice to see a whole list of what everyone across the state is doing with this program. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate your feedback and your um, information about your local events as well. So even if it's just your book club getting together to talk about the book and okay. you've invited the rest of the community to come in and um, talk about it, we will put that up there and let everyone know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so nominating a book for the One Book One Nebraska, this is last year's flyer, but you can nominate for the one book year round. It's not just a certain time of year. This is available all year long on our Center for the Book uh, webpage. And this is just a screenshot of what that submission page looks like. It's very simple and straightforward. We don't need um, a whole book essay about why you've chosen this book and why you think it should be submitted. We just ask that whether it check marks those boxes of is it a Nebraska author? Does it have a Nebraska setting? Is it available in print? So those are really our only requirements and not even all of them, just the only one that probably is most important is, is it available? That's the one we need every time, but otherwise just some sort of Nebraska connection is really what we're looking for. We do have a question about this year's um, book, specifically about the author, um, which I'm not sure if you didn't know. Um, someone wants to know, was the author able to do much promotion of his book, which just came out in 2016, because of his age? Do we know? I mean, there's that one video that's on the page. Mm -hmm. It's and my impression, yes. And, uh, and also through the Facebook page that uh, was created to uh, Focus on the book. And oh, the book is, has its own Facebook page for yep. the book, not just for yes. the, yeah. Yeah, I know there, um, the publisher did a lot of work on it. I don't know if he did a book tour um, or if Ken Geyer maybe took a bigger hand in that. That's a great question. Yeah, because there is the book trailer video on our page, on the One Book, One Nebraska page under the book section mm -hmm. that has him talking. And this was a New York Times bestseller, wasn't it? Yeah. So it did get a good amount of publicity back in 2016 when it was first published. Yes. And uh, to that end, because it was so... Um, well documented as an important book about uh, Pearl Harbor. One of the things, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that you have seen over the last few days is how widely uh, the story of Mr. Stratton's passing has been. Mm -hmm. um, it's been yeah. on ABC, CNN, national news sources. So this yeah. is not just a local. Uh, notation of his passing, but a national notation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I read a USA Today story about it that we shared. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any other um, questions for us? Did Were we able to get in touch with him about the fact that it had been selected for um, Nebraska? I know. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we did. Okay. We didn't hear back from him directly, but we heard from his son, Randy. Oh, great. Okay. So they were very much aware that, that the book was selected. Okay. Um, and I have a question about you. This is written with um, Ken Geyer. Do um, you know much about him? Or would he be available to do things throughout the year? Do we know? You know, I don't so know about... Like, obviously, he assisted him yeah. with writing it. No. I don't know about his availability for... Mm -hmm book talks, um, that's usually something you have to find out from the, uh, either his publisher or agent, but I do believe he has written several books yeah, in I the past. Yeah, I think over 20 some yes. books. He yeah. um, he's a very accomplished yes. author. He's a professional writer, and uh, the last I knew he lived in Colorado, and um, he has comments at the end of the book. Uh, about how he came 
to write the story. And he had a daughter who lived in the Colorado Springs area, mm -hmm. and she had heard about Mr. Stratton and had contacted uh, her father and encouraged him to look into this. So Mr. Geyer met with Mr. Stratton and um, the project took off from there and uh, they were aware of uh, Mr. Stratton's age and the limitations in being able to do this. Um, but they were able to sell it to um, HarperCollins very quickly and have the book come out for the 75th anniversary mm -hmm. of um, the Pearl Harbor attack. Uh, I, I don't know much more about Mr. Geyer than that, yeah. but he, he obviously is a professional writer, and I will go back and say that was one of the very strong points about this book was that it was so beautifully written. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very nice in its presentation of information. Yeah, Crystal was kind enough to find Ken Geyer's Twitter, so he does have a Twitter account that you can contact him through, and he has a page for all the gallant men on the Harper Collins Collins Publishers page, webpage. Yeah. yeah. So potentially going through the publisher would be a way to get in touch with him to see yeah. um, if that if it was something he'd be willing to either come to speak about. And a lot of authors do um, Skype things with mm -hmm. both classrooms and with libraries. Yeah. As well, they can't travel to wherever um, you're winding mm -hmm. down. Yeah. And Colorado's not too far away. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. yeah. There is an interstate. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, this is segueing from Mr. Geyer, but I think that an important part of this book is um, Mr. Stratton's background, um, not only because he was uh, born in Innavale and then moved to Red Cloud. But he also talks uh, very clearly about uh, rural poverty and the ways in which uh, rural America were impacted um, during the Depression and post-Depression, and that he initially entered the service to have a steady paycheck and one that he could send home to his family. and. Many of the people that we think of in the military during World War II, we think that they often um, enlisted because of the Pearl Harbor attack. Mm -hmm. And with Mr. Stratton, that was not the case. He entered prior to uh, Pearl Harbor and um, then, of course, details it as an experienced sailor. But I, I think that the background of what rural America looked like in the late 1930s and early 1940s is also a very important part of American history. Mm -hmm. I think that's good to, for people to know about this book too, because I think some people may see it and see the title and think it's just about the war or okay. just about that event, this whole book all about that, but there's so much more right. mm -hmm. in there um, beyond just that one day and, and what came of that. We do have contact information available for me. Um, if, you have, <laughs> if you have questions about the one book process, um, my email is up there, also my phone number, so you can give me a call at the office and I can help guide you through some of those One Book, One Nebraska um, resources we have. Um, yeah, do you guys have any questions? We've yeah. just got a little time left. Oh yeah, we have time. Maybe any other questions, comments, thoughts, anything you want to say about the one, uh, one book, one Nebraska, the um, in general, or this particular mm -hmm. um, title? Uh, go ahead and type it in there, or if you want to raise your hand, you can use your microphone and and, and comment or question that way. I can't tell if people are typing in as a thing until something appears. So. While we're waiting, okay. I would like to ask uh, Becky if she would talk about work she has done, writing she has done, and other activ activities she's been involved in related to veterans. 
Well, I, I thought it was very interesting when um, Erica was talking about veterans and the warrior writers and um, that often um, veterans don't want to talk about their experience. And um, that was what I saw. My father had served in World War II and he enlisted after Pearl Harbor. My uncle enlisted in the Army prior to Pearl Harbor and um, my uncle ended up being a prisoner of war in Germany for almost two years. Um, and when he came back, he never talked about it and we were told never to ask him about it. Um, and of course, as as I got older, many of the young men uh, with whom I went to high school or college uh, served in Vietnam and um, my brother was in the military as well. Somewhere in the last few years, uh, I learned that the um, suicide rate for veterans was 22 veterans per day. And uh, now the last figure I've seen is 20 per day. And that has just haunted me. And um, I've been writing for a long time. And I decided in 2017 to put together a book that dealt with um, military and service issues. And a portion of the sales of the book go to the Military and Student Veterans Center at the university because every year they do a ruck march before the Iowa-Nebraska game to raise awareness of the veteran suicide rate. So I've really been caught up more strongly in this project um, in the last couple of years. And um, as I was on the committee, for the One Book, One Nebraska, I had to pull back as a writer and a relative of veterans and read it for the beautiful writing that was in there. But um, it also, to me, reinforces what Mr. Stratton said early in the book, why he wrote it. Um, he pulled away from that for a long time, um, and then it was that the story needed to be told. And um, so as we encourage veterans to find uh, workable ways to deal with their experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we do have a comment. Uh, Chuck at Hebron C. Chris Library here in Nebraska says, we had our book club discuss the book last night, and I would highly recommend this book for book clubs to read. Excellent. Book club. Good to hear. Thumbs up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have book club kits available um, through the Nebraska Library Commission. Your regional library systems also have book club kits available, so you can get them either through us or them. I know there is probably a bit of a wait. People are already scheduling this book for our book club kits. Um, we have 50 copies, yeah, two large print, and it's available to the Talking Book and Braille Service, too. Mm -hmm. So they uh, read and produced that here in our library commission studio, so it's uh, a really great version of it as well if you have anybody with uh, visual or reading impairments get them set up with that talking book service so they can get this book as well mm -hmm. and we did send kits out to all four of our regional library mm -hmm. systems too so they have their own set yeah as well if um, all the copies that we have here via the commission are not available we're also buying them or interlibrary loaning them from Anywhere in the country is an option for you guys too. <laughs> we try to offer as many as we can, but there's yeah. only so many we can purchase and have. Oh, oh um, more questions. Well, I wasn't looking. <laughs> um, ah, in Nebraska City, Claudette is uh, says I will be hosting a book club on this book in October in Nebraska City. I'm glad it was chosen, as I had sent in a nomination for it Ooh, two oh, years ago. Ah. <laughs> See, that's just. Tell you, you if your book's not picked one year, submit it again. Trying, because yeah. who knows what it's been submitted against, and maybe mm -hmm. that year something else is a little bit more um, timely or catches yeah. people's interest. But 
we get so many great submissions that just because it's not picked once doesn't mean it won't be picked another right. time. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yeah. that has happened on a number of occasions. Yes. <laughs> and we do have a comment from our commission staff here. I believe it's probably Lisa or Amy who is there watching um, about the book club kits. They they handle those. There's many reservations for it. Some months in the summer are still some months in the summer are still available, but otherwise um, fall or winter would be the next time you'd be able to definitely get it. So um, if you haven't already, get your name in or yeah, um, contact our book club staff. Yeah. To the commission. And the book is very affordable, so mm -hmm. please yeah. buy books too. <laughs> I see you guys both have hardcovers, I'm assuming by now it's also out in paperback. I have a paperback, yeah, at my office, yeah. yeah. There's those options in the ebook and the audio, all the usual. Mm -hmm. yeah. If your library has a copy of the book, you can contact us um, for promotional materials as yeah. well through the commission. We have bookmarks that we can send you. We have discussion questions for the book. We can get your book club. We have posters. There's always, um, we have One Book, One Nebraska Seal stickers. If you have a copy in your library, you'd like to have a, I just think it's on your book. Mm -hmm. Hold yeah. that up for us. So just to signify one that yeah. a One Book selection and what year it was selected for. So you can always contact us and ask for promotional materials and supplies. We'd love to help you out in that form as well. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Or comments from our watchers? Mm -hmm. Nothing oh, yeah. right now, yeah. Um, so for these promotion materials, people wouldn't have to print them out themselves. We would send them. We have all the nope. copies yeah. that we would just send. We so, order a yeah. bunch um, at the beginning of the year. We try to send them out with book club kits, but sometimes they get sent back to us. So when we send them <laughs> to you, we mean for you to keep them. <laughs> but please don't send them. yeah, please don't send them back. <laughs> We have plenty, but we're <laughs> always willing. Um, we gave a bunch to Erica at Humanity oh, yeah. to send out. We send them out all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> so um, if you're a bookstore owner and you would like some, um, if yeah. you want just want them for your library users, um, we'd be happy to send you a stack of them just to put out on your desk to mm -hmm. hand out for free. Definitely. All right, so it doesn't look like any other last minute desperate questions are coming in. Uh, desperate questions. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how desperate they are, but yeah. But we do have chats with contact info, of course, yep. on here, um, or the web pages to go through. If you have any other questions or anything about it, um, please do reach out. And so thank you for coming in. Thank you for the oh, question. Yeah. You guys are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> So I think if you don't have anything else you guys want to talk about or chat about right now, we could wrap it up this morning. Any last minute words from any of you before I take over? All right. Get the book. Read it. Talk about it. Learn more about the event. All right. So we are going to pop out of here. So that will wrap it up for today's Encompass Live. Um, and here on... Our website, I'm going to show you where you can, where the archive will be. Um, if you go to the commission's website and look up Encompass Live, you can see it comes up in our search here. But also, if you choose any search engine of your choice and type in Encompass Live, so far we are the only thing called that on the internet. All right. Available on YouTube. <laughs> Someday I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that. But it's been like 10 years and nobody seems to. Yeah. But you find our webpage, um, and this is where I have our upcoming shows uh, and. Our archives are right here just underneath. So if you click on here, you'll get a list of our archives, the most recent ones at the top of the page. So today's show, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me by the end of the day today, should be up there on the top of the list. Um, I will have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and then a link to the slides mm -hmm. that we use today as well. If you need to, you want to browse through those. They will be available there as well. Um, everyone who attended this morning or who uh, we're registered for today's show. Get an email from me letting you know it's available. We also push it out into our various social media, our mailing list, Twitter, Facebook, all the places we have mm -hmm. to communicate with to let you know when the recording is available. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you too. This is our archive where we have a search feature here. We can search all of our historical shows here. 
you'll notice we do have a, you can limit it just most recent 12 months. That is because we have our full archives here. Uh, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, this, which I won't do to make you dizzy, you will <laughs> find our very first shows back in 2009. Um, here, there we go. Easy. Meet the NLC. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you just want to see something on a topic of anything that we did over the years, go ahead and search for it. If you want really current information, limit it to those most recent 12 months. Um, pay attention just when you're watching an archived show of the original date of that it was broadcast. Um, some things may no longer exist. Some shows may be, will always be, you know, useful to you, some topics, but some things may no longer exist anymore. Links may be broken. Services or products may no longer, may have changed or just been eliminated completely. Um, but, you know, just pay attention when you are looking at the archives in there. But as long as YouTube keeps hosting our, our, our recordings, then we'll keep them up there. And if YouTube ever disappears, we'll find somewhere else. <laughs> we have options. May I add one comment? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my book is entitled One Small Photo, mm -hmm. and it is um, 17 poems and one short story, and they are all military-related. It's available at Francie and Finch in Lincoln, mm -hmm. at Chapters, uh, Books and Gifts in Seward, and at the Cather Center in Red Cloud. Yeah. So that's Thank definitely you. a good companion piece. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is. <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So um, that will wrap it up for today's show. Uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is our pretty sweet tech. Uh, once a month, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, comes on Encompass Live and does something tech related. So if you're a big tech person, this is the show for you to watch out for. Uh, next week, she'll be talking about coding languages. Which coding language should I learn? I have no idea. <laughs> um, that's why Amanda's going to come and tell us all about them. There's so many different ones out there and why you would use them and how you would learn them. She's going to come and talk to us about that on next Wednesday's show. So please do sign up for that. Any of our other shows we have here. You see I've got um, almost all of March in here. I'm working on something in the last date there. You'll start seeing some of the April shows come up as well onto the um, schedule. So just keep an eye on that. And um, sign up for any of their other shows. We are also on Facebook, and Compass Live is, so you can give us a like over there. You'll get reminders. Um, here I posted about um, Dom Stratton's passing and log in for today's show. No, I don't want to log in right now. <laughs> um, so I keep, you know, two or three times a week to post notices up here about upcoming shows, previous shows, recordings that are all coming up and available. So um, if you want to keep up with us on Encompass Live out there, you can do so. Um, I think that wraps up today. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us this morning talking about this great book. Hopefully more and more people will read it. Thank you, everybody, for attending this morning. And we'll see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>